I wonder how long it takes to drive the island. Can it be done? I have no idea. We're going to find out today, hopefully. Maybe we'll be back at midnight. I'm not sure. We're leaving Funchal and we're going to drive all the way around the island, stopping a little bit to let Leo have a run, maybe grabbing a bite to eat. So Funchal to Funchal. Let's go. One thing when you go for a drive on Madeira, you never know what you're going to get. There are so many different microclimates here, so you have to be prepared. I have a sweater for cool weather. I have a rain jacket for rainy weather and sunscreen for the burning sun. So I think we have everything we need, so we're ready to go. Start the timer. We have no idea how today is going to unfold. We've never driven the island before. A lot of people have been asking us how long it takes to drive around the entire island. So we're actually looking forward to finding out for ourselves. We are not going to head up into the mountains today. We are going to try and drive the perimeter. So all around without going up too much. We are well on our way. We are just going to transition here through Ribera Brava. But we're going to stop in Ponta del Sol and take Leo for a quick walk. Well, here we are. We're already almost in Ponta del Sol. Our first stop for lunch is in Ponta del Sol at one of our little secret pizza places. Let's go see what Minik has ordered. Pizza. All right, well, we had a quick lunch. We are now heading from Ponta del Sol to Ponta de Pargo for our next stop. That's the lighthouse. It's really pretty, and we'll go from there. There's so many tunnels. These are huge tunnels. There's over a hundred tunnels on Madeira. We're just approaching Caleta, and we know many people who have bought homes out here in Caleta. And just like that, it started raining. We're different weather all over the island. We left sunny, and all of a sudden, it's full on rain. We are now driving through a complete white out. Hot and foggy. And it's sunny. Oh. Which way, which way, <laughs> I don't know. The whole landscape is changing already. It looks much more rural. You see cows, you almost see farmland. It's different already. We'll talk to you at Ponto de Pargo. Farol Lighthouse. See. Si. See. Si. <laughs> Where are we going to park? Right here? Here's good. Well, we're here at Ponte de Pargo. It's sunny again and a beautiful ocean view. We are on the far western tip of the island. This is one of our favorite views. And now we're gonna leave Ponta de Pargo and head to Porto Moniche. It looks like it's about 37 minutes. It's a really pretty drive. I'm looking forward to this part. Here we go. This is one of our favorite drives. It's like driving through an old fashioned country lane with the hills in the background and the greenery. It's really nice. Beautiful flowers everywhere. I think it's because of all these flowers along here that it's such a fragrant drive. I love the smell of the eucalyptus everywhere too. Lots of miradours you can pull off on, which is very nice to do if you want to get some nice scenery shots. This is one of our favorite drives. How are you liking it, Leo? How is it? Are you liking the drive? 
Hi. The hydrangeas along the side of the road are so pretty. Oh, this is so beautiful. We're getting into the lusher part of the island. Porto Maniche is in the northwestern part of the island where Ponte de Pargo is in the southwest part of the island. But as we get up and over here, it's getting more lush. And right before we hit Porto Maniche, we hit Arcada de Cruz, I think it's called. And that's where that Atelaferique all the way down is. That's something we want to do. We've never done that. One thing you notice when you're driving here is there's lots of little picnic areas that you can just pull off. And they have like a little barbecue, you, I guess you can do, or you just have a picnic. Well, we're definitely on the downward slope now heading down towards Porto Maniche. It says it's about 15 minutes away still, and we have sun again. <laughs> no kidding, the weather just keeps changing. This little town is called Santa. That's cute. Santa? It's like Santa, like Santa Claus. I don't know if I'd want to live uh, in Porto Maniche though. It's kind of far from Funchal. It's far, it's a nice place to go for the day or for a weekend. It's definitely worth visiting. It is so beautiful and rugged over here in the far west side. This drive now turns into a coastal cliff drive right along the Atlantic Ocean. Look at this gorgeous house, holy smokes. Look at that. That's a house. And again, there's a Miraduru. They're everywhere. Great place to stop and take a look. Give maybe Mr. Leo a little walkabout. Wow, that is absolutely beautiful. Look at that, Leo. What do you think? That's where we're heading down there. They have everything down there. Really nice restaurants and cafes, boutique hotels. There's even a helicopter pad. I guess you're on the far extreme west side of the island. In case of emergencies, they can land here with a helicopter uh, to pick up anybody that they need to pick up. Lots of parking. Park right in the center of town there. There's some big parking lots, the easiest ones to park in when you go to the natural volcanic pools. They're busy today, there's two of them. There's one over on this side, and then there's another one over on this side. And if you look closely, you could just see people floating around there. What a beautiful day to be in that water. Is that the old highway? Look at that. It's a road. People live up there. Wow. There's your driveway. <laughs> it's been about an hour and 20 minutes, and we're here now. It's super sunny again. And then we needed our rain jackets for a few minutes too. So it's nice to be back in the sun. We have to continue our drive. Let's go. We are entering Porto Maniche. Oh, it's like a roller coaster. How's your stomach? Kind of shaky. Here we are approaching the center of Porto Maniche. Lots of parking. We are going to re-coordinate here and check our time and put in our next location. And our next stop is going to be Seychelles. Now it says it's only 11 minutes away, we'll see. Yeah, that's a close one. Along this side from Porto Maniche to Seychelles, there's some really pretty waterfalls. If Funchal has the shopping and the old town and the history, this side of the island and the north side certainly has the beauty. It looks like Hawaii to me. It's majestic with quaint little villages. There's some really pretty waterfalls. I love that little restaurant. It's so European sitting outside looking at everything. This is a really nice side of the island for surfers. They get some good waves here. Just a different vibe altogether. More lush, much more Jurassic Park like here. Raw beauty, sheer cliffs. And here we are, just like that. Coming into Benvindo Seychelles. Seychelles. Spelled Seychelles. That's Porto Maniche in the background, way back there. And this is just one of the natural lava pools of Seychelles. Well, I think we're about halfway around. We're midway north side of the island. We're still heading east. And I think the next stop is Salvesante. 
Salvinsante? Salvinsante. That is where we usually bisect the island and head back. But this time after we get there, we'll put in the next coordinate and see if we can head to Santana, Machico, Porto de Cruz, out that way and see more of the eastern side of the island. So let's head off. So from here, Salvinsante looks to be about another 11 minute drive away. Not too far at all. And then we're seriously three quarters of the way. Let's go. Look at that waterfall. It's so beautiful. This is absolutely gorgeous along here. This is now mid island on the north side. Opposite to this on the south side is Rivera Brava, which we love as well, but this is just Jurassic Park. Look at those cliffs, full sun, lots of surfers. This is the beachside part of Salvesant. The actual town is right. through the tunnel as well. There's quite a few people visiting, people having Justino's Madeira wine and sitting outside and having lunch. So next we have we will head from Salvesante to Santana for another 36 minutes to get there. Let's go. Santana. How's the driving been going, hon? So far, so good. It's a 33 kilometer drive from Seychelles to Santana, and so far it's been 90% tunnel. And there's flowers. Of course. The hydrangeas on the island are so pretty. Blues, pinks, whites, and they just seem to grow along all of the major highways, even the smaller highways as well. This is very much small village, small valleys, very lush. We're getting towards the northeast side of the island. Yeah, well, there's a lady with a wheelchair, okay? I... Coppers. The town here is having some kind of party. We hear music and there's police. Oh, is that ever picturesque? With little homes up on the hillside. It's a one car at a time tunnel. Well, there's two cars coming. Okay. That is a small tunnel. Our turn. Here we go. That's pretty cool. <laughs> I have never seen anything like this. This is carved through solid mountain. Just okay. enough for one car to go through. It's a water leaking mountain, mid mountain <laughs> road. And sunshine. You know, we show a lot of modern homes, new builds, and, and they're great, but there's something amazing about the traditional homes here with the terracotta roofs. It feels very jungly down here. I think it feels very uh, oceanside. I Don't feel jungly. Jungly oceanside. <laughs> this is much more tropical to me down on this part right here. Hey, the wine museum. I want to go there. What if is you, that? If you get into trouble up on the mountain, you could just simply just take that stairwell down. <laughs> I dare you to try and go up it. Who thinks Doug could do it? I actually uh, think he could. <laughs> Monique and Doug? No way. This is a two-person no venture. No way. Santana 3K. That's it. And here we are in Santana, home of the Madeiran houses. From Santana, we just got some gas and we're gonna head to Canisal. We have 25 minutes. Let's go. Oh, I think I like Riviera Frio. I know some people find that interior too touristy, but I really like it. I think part of what you miss when you are uh, do the perimeter like this is that you miss some of the interior. And like many countries, the interior is also really nice and definitely worth visiting. Definitely rainy again. Sounds like a day on the island of Madeira. You can sure get turned around on this island. There's so many roundabouts and curvy roads and coming out of tunnels, 
you get quite disoriented when you're driving if you're not familiar with the uh, areas and all of a sudden you come out somewhere and like oh i recognize where we are we're heading to the easternmost point to go to is canny south i guess if you wanted to go as far east as you could you would go on San Lorenzo. I mean, we're going on the outside of the island along the coastline, taking the main kind of highway, but there is so much beauty when you get off these roads and get up into the mountains. It's a whole different kind of view as you're looking down over these valleys and these mountain roads. That would take much more than a day, I think. Yeah, for sure. Off in the distance is the Dragon's Tail. The Dragon's Tail. This is one of the bigger ports on the island in Kennesaw. I love all the terracotta roofs. Oh, this so much character. So this is the last town, Canisal, on the most eastern end of the island. Our next stop from Canisal is to head to Santa Cruz via Machico. If you've watched our medieval festival video, we feature Machico, which is a really, really nice town. We really enjoy going to Machico. It's very quaint. It has a very nice beach and just mountains and greenery all around. So we're gonna head past Machico and into Santa Cruz. It says 11 minutes from Canisal. We're on the homeward stretch now. We are back on the south side of the island. So we're heading back west towards Funchal now. I have to say all the highway system here is beautiful. These are really well taken care of. I think we're near the airport, aren't we? We are right beside the airport. They actually have a beautiful complex here underneath the runway. And here we are exiting into Santa Cruz. It's a super cute little town. We like coming to the beach here when it's nice and hot and watching the planes. Yeah. Look at this mansion. What is that? Police. Is that the police station? <laughs> There's the airport that we just passed. Lovely place just to come and float in the water on a calm day. The water is actually quite blue on a sunny day. They have these nice little tiki type shelters and wooden platforms to lay out a towel. And it's a nice place to lie here and swim and just watch the planes landing. We're ready to leave Santa Cruz and we're going to head back home to Funchal. It looks like it's about 14 minutes. Do you find the roads sometimes counterintuitive here, Doug? Definitely, there's so many twists and turns and I feel like I'm turning into oncoming traffic all the time. Uh, just kind of, hopefully there's a car in front of me that I can follow. It's definitely clearing up as we get closer to Funchal. We're almost back at the exact same Miradour in Funchal. We're just arriving and I took a look at the timer and it's pretty incredible how long actual drive time was. Now this is just driving time. This isn't our stopping time. But we're arriving back at our Miraduro that we started at. For those of you who have asked, can you drive the entire island in one day? Yes, you can. That was fast enough. It's pretty tiring. And that's just the outer roads along the ocean. There's still all up in the mountains to do. And we didn't stop to do any activities. There's so many sights to see and things to do that obviously we missed out on. I would recommend to divide the island in half, kind of like the tour companies do. Do the east side, do the west side, and actually do things and see things rather than a full drive. But it was kind of fun to drive all around and get back to the same spot. Today we took about six hours all together yep. for a little bit of stopping and, and driving the entire island. It's so interesting though to see how the island changes at all the different towns and on the east side and on the west side, north side, south side, how it's all so different. So as always, check back in and track us down.